Good evening, everybody. Welcome to episode 20 of Words on Whiskey, brought to you by Irish Whiskey Magazine. And uh, as always, we'll start off with the news and uh, quite an eventful uh, few days, actually, and um, some great news and some not so great news. Uh, we start off, unfortunately, that the North has gone into lockdown. So the hospitality sector up North ha has effectively closed for four weeks. Uh, in addition to that, the off licenses and restaurants, uh, sorry, the off licenses and supermarkets uh, won't be allowed to sell alcohol after 8 p.m. So, uh, not good news for the North. Uh, hopefully, that will be avoided here, but uh, we shall see. Uh, on more positive news, uh, the positive news is that we do have uh, investment in distilleries in the North. And Ecklenville Distillery has uh, begun a 9 million euro expansion and, and investment scheme, helped with the backing of Invest NI for the tune of 659,000 pounds, a total investment of 9 million, which uh, goes towards increasing the capacity, increasing capacity for maturation and production, and also to extend the visitor center. So, that's great news there. So looking forward to, to that. And it's really positive news indeed. And then we welcome the 34th official distillery to be open in Ireland. Uh, Crawley Distillery based in County Donegal became the 34th operational GI Irish whiskey distillery. And it's the brainchild of Joe Devaney, Connor McManaman and Kieran Davies. And they've um, begun production there a couple of weeks ago, officially opened October the 8th. Uh, they initially producing a single malt, double distilled single malt in old cognac stills uh, that are actually direct heated. So uh, that should be interesting. Capacity is pretty small. It's 50,000 liters of pure alcohol per year. But we wish them all the very best and... Uh, Hopefully they'll get some visitors in as, in as well soon uh, as all this COVID lockdown comes to an end. And then Waterford Distillery have released the first organic certified Irish whiskey. Uh, it's called the Gaia 1.1 and it's been bottled at 50% as the rest of them. And it's a combination of uh, spirit that's come from grain that's been provided by John Malik, Paddy Tobin, Alan Jackson, Pat and Dennis Booth, Jason Stanley, and Trevor Harris. It's bottled at 50% ABV and retailing for 85 euro. And uh, that's available online now. Uh, and then finally, uh, Brian Nation's farewell song, I suppose. Uh, the much anticipated annual release of the Middleton Very Rare series. And this year's 2020 vintage features whiskies aging between 13 and 35 years of age, a blend of Irish grain and pure pot still. Uh, and, and this year's uh, release, there's probably more emphasis on the pot still this time than, uh, than previous years. Uh, and bottled at 40% ABV and retailing for 180 euro so i know a lot of people will be looking forward to that and uh, of course next year kevin o'gorman takes over that role and he'll have his signature on it so we wish him very best to look with that so that's the news for for this week um our guest this week is alex thomas so let me bring in alex alex good evening good evening how are you i'm very well thank you thank you for joining us Obviously, there's disappointing news today, of course, with the lock-in now imposed for four weeks up north. So how do you feel about that and what's your I, impact I'm assessment? Sad, sad for all the businesses that it's going to affect. Um, obviously, we have to put the health and safety of those people um, in the country first. Uh, but it will be a struggle for a lot of the businesses here to ensure that they can open up again in four weeks' time. But we'll yeah. be all here to support them in any way we can. And, Hopefully all of them will reopen in four weeks and we'll be there to enjoy another drink with them. 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And tell me, how have you um, managed personally with COVID? Are you still able to go to work? You're still seen as an essential worker, and we you are, go into uh, the distillery. I'm in the distillery every day. Yeah, so um, obviously we are putting all the employees first. So safety is the most um, paramount. So there's no visitors on site. It's just the staff that are there. And we're looking after each other, ensuring the safety is there. So when we go home, we're not passing anything on to any of our family members. Um, but so far, so good. We've all been safe and well. And that's yeah. the way we like to keep it. So Very good. Very good. I see some uh, Halloween mascots and sexton memorabilia there behind you. And, just a yeah, little. So, <laughs> so just, to, just to introduce you to those that aren't uh, aware of, of who you are and what your background is, uh, you are the master blender for the Sexton brand. I am indeed, yeah. So the Sexton is a new uh, single malt that came to market in 2017. Um, it's been an absolute privilege to be part of the creation of this new whiskey that is representing Ireland now. Um, we went to America first, launched there in November 2017. And in less than a year, we became the number one Irish single malt in America. So what an achievement. We brought yeah. it home with our heads held high in 2018 and launched in Dublin and Belfast. So, yeah, very proud moment. Yeah. Tell me, going back, uh, tell us a little bit about your background. You're, you're, you're living up in Coleraine, I believe. I am indeed, yeah. So I was born near Balamani. I lived in Castle Rock for most of my life and moved to Coleraine when I got married. Um, was really lucky to get to the opportunity in 2004 to join the whiskey industry. Uh, for anybody that lives in the North Coast, they always know about the oldest licensed distillery in the world on our doorstep. And I was one of the lucky few that got the opportunity to join that industry back in 2004. And it's been a dream come true since. Yeah. And how did you start off? What was your first role there? Uh... Alex? Uh, so I joined into the maturation team initially and was doing a bit of stock control and uh, admin work to begin with. Um, but I was really fortunate to join a team of people who had 30, 40 years experience. And they took me on like their daughter under their wing and yeah. passed all of the knowledge of the old ways against the new. And I very quickly fell in love and decided that was the career for me and yeah. decided that was the time I wanted to take my exams and make my mark in the whiskey industry very good you started in the in the timber as in in the timber merchant industry before moving to Bushmills, was it i did indeed yeah um from leaving leaving school i went into the timber industry so that was where i suppose my um craftsmanship want to come in from the wood side of things um, yeah i can see the creation and the, the natural product that you're taking and what you can create and turn in to different so in the wood industry it was more into um uh, buildings and uh, furniture, that kind of thing. And then moving on to the whiskey industry to see how that wood would actually give flavors and yeah. give that profile and color into a spirit. So. Yeah. I mean, although you're, you're master blender, I mean, you're wearing many hats actually in the role of the sexton. Um, would it be have been experience that you would have got through working in bush mills? Indeed, yes. I have had the pl pleasure of actually experiencing all aspects of making whiskey while I was at Bushmills Distillery. So I learned about the craftsmanship of distilling, about maturation, about bottling. I got the opportunity to go and actually spend time with the molsters. So I learned all the different uh, profiles that you would need to make a really good whiskey and how I can impact on flavor and uh, actually presentation and the bottle side of things as well. So yeah, I an all round yeah. experience I was able to gain. Yeah, I mean, you're very much front of shop, if you like, for the Sexton. You are their brand ambassador to a large extent as well. And presumably, you know, now you're not able to travel, you're not able to go and visit, you know, your export markets. What kind of impact is that having for you? I think it's affecting everybody. We all have our own impact on how, obviously, we're getting the spirits out and about. And getting face-to-face -face contact for me is part of the experience of the Sexton, getting to be... Uh, an extended family member of the Sexton by getting to meet people at the whiskey festivals and going and sharing the word. Um, yeah. Obviously, we've had to do that electronically now, so Zoom has come into play, and uh, we've yeah. got, got the opportunity to do training sessions that way. Um, obviously, I miss getting to the whiskey festivals and hearing all the different people's views on the Sexton because that's how I learn. I learn yeah. how to make uh, a Sexton family of different 
whiskey flavor profiles that work for everyone. So yeah. um, hopefully we'll get back to that soon. Yeah, yeah, hopefully so. But tell me, you you would have worked with uh, Colm Egan, of course, master distiller, and uh, Helen Mulholland, master blender as well. I think she's there 26 years, I was reading. So all very hands-on and, and useful experience to, to leverage up, I'm sure. Absolutely. I believe I learned from the best in the industry. Uh, they have been sounding boards the whole way through my career. Um, again, took me under the wing showed me all the things that I needed to do and steered me in the right path to ensure that whatever kind of creation I made, I represent Ireland well. Um, so they have really put their stamp on the Irish whiskey category. And if I can be in a small part, something similar to what they are, I will be very pleased. Yeah. I mean, you've had tremendous success with the Sexton um, in a relatively short period of time. Um, but what was it that actually made you switch and go out and create your own blend and your own brand uh, and go ahead with the sexton well i suppose for anybody that's in the industry it, it takes a long time to learn the craft and even 16 years after i am still learning i'm still looking at different things but i wanted to bring people into whiskey that believed it wasn't for them um i suppose growing up for me Whiskey was seen almost as an old man's drink or something that was drunk just at the end of an evening or by the fireside. And I have a real belief that that's not what whiskey's about. There's much, much more available in a whiskey. And um, so I started out looking to see how I could create a whiskey that was for those that already enjoyed whiskey and those that thought it wasn't for them. And that's yeah. what the Sexton's all about. It was a versatile whiskey that's approachable in taste and allows people to drink it their way. So we can yeah. drink it neat with ice, mix it, or even add it in a cocktail, and it works really, really well. Well, well speaking of that, I'm going to uh, grab a glass here. Um, but uh, let, talk us through the packaging first, because it's it's a very unique package. It's very original. Obviously, the, the hexagon uh, on top kind of reflects the Giants Causeway, something I presume you're very proud of being from the neighborhood. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, what was the, the thinking behind the branding and in terms of uh, the packaging? Well, um, if we go with the name first, the name Sexton comes from medieval Latin and it means a custodian of precious objects. So when naming the whiskey, I wanted it to represent what I do. So it also means the caretaker of precious things. So I'm the caretaker as the master blender while it's in the cask and you yeah. become its caretaker while it's in the bottle or in your glass. So that represents right. a little bit about it. It's also to do with, the, uh, if you think of the people that you have left behind or those people that have inspired you to be the person that you are. So yeah. my grandfather, my father always brought out those bottles of special whiskey when someone in our family had passed away. So we all okay. got together and we celebrated life. So the wee symbol, you can see our little skull. The skull on top, yeah. The text on, so it's the name given to the grave digger, the guy that lays the body to rest. But I remember those as happy times. As much as we were mourning the person that had passed, our family got together and we celebrated that life. And our house was filled with stories of the fun things that they had done and the naughty things that maybe we shouldn't have got to hear about. So yeah. those memories were there. So that's what the Sexton's all about. It's about making those memories when you're here so that yeah. you have a story to tell after you're gone. Yeah. I suppose it's I an Irish thing as well. I mean... We celebrate it's, death in a very different way to a lot of different countries. Yeah, you know? so. We're only here for a short time. We all know that. So it's about making it a good time and leaving stories for our families and those sad times to have those memories to hold on to. Yeah, absolutely. Again, our bottle. Yep, yeah, you were 100% right on our Giants Causeway. I wanted to represent the home of the Sexton and what better than the World Heritage Causeway Stones. Sure. Um, the bottle had to stand out. Um, when I started in the industry, there was only three distilleries. And now, as you know yourself, there are many, many more. So what was going to make people lift the bottle of the Sexton instead of something they already knew? So by having that little bit of a different shape bottle from the norm, it gave that little bit of intrigue in why we should pick the Sexton. Yeah. Purposely black, because the best day as a master blender is the day you release the spirit for the very first time from the cask. You get those aromas and you get to taste that beautiful whiskey for the very first time. So people get to experience a little bit of what I do every day by hiding it away in the bottle. 
Yeah. It's definitely a, a unique a unique bottling. It really stands out on the shelf as well. So, but look, I'll I'll try the contents anyway, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about the the blend or the not a blend because I keep on saying blend. People have been saying to me blend when it's a, a single malt, which is what it's about forty five euro here. Um, I don't know what the price is up north, but yeah, probably a lot cheaper. It varies from about 27 pounds up to 35, depending on where we're at. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to create a whiskey that was affordable for everybody. Um, yeah. I come from a hardworking family and I wanted people to experience quality things at a price they could afford. So the yeah. Sexton allows you to do that. Um, yeah. So the first thing you'll notice is the beautiful, rich, dark color. Yes, very much coming so. Coming through from our Oloroso sherry casks. So okay. it has spent its life in Oloroso. So it is, as you can certainly say, it's 100% Irish single malt. It's triple distilled in copper pot stills and exclusively aged in only Oloroso sherry casks. Oh, so there's no bourbon influence there at all? No bourbon whatsoever. Um, the Sexton represents, for me, my life story. So mm -hmm. it's the 100% Irish single malt based on where we come from. Triple yeah. distilled from my knowledge of where I trained at at the Bushmills Distillery. So it pays yeah. homage to where I to tradition but i embrace innovation and how you actually mature so yeah. the oloroso sherry comes from my grandmother my grandmother was a firm believer that us young ladies should learn to cook for her husbands and she spent many many years trying to teach me which i am fortunately did not master uh, okay. but one of her secret ingredients was always to put sherry into her fruit cakes so that was a little bit of a homage to pay for those that came before me and it it's just a wonderful, wonderful flavor profile that works really well with the spirit that I bring off in the stills. Yeah. So that's the reason you're getting that lovely, rich color coming through on the nose. Um, Sorry. Yeah. So this is this is bottled at forty percent ABV, and it's actually incredibly easy to drink. Uh, but but there is that uh, definitely fruity and uh, Christmassy note to it as well. There is that little bit of sherry influence makes it that little bit sweeter for people who, again, think whiskey isn't for them. So it brings in those that already enjoy whiskey, but brings that intrigue into those that think, oh, a little bit sweeter. Perhaps this is something I will enjoy. Yeah, yeah. And there is no age statement on it. Is there a rough guideline as to what age the spirit is within it? The, the minimum age is four years. But again, minimum each four. cask is unique as you and I. So each tree that we use is a unique as well. So it's more when the flavor profile is right so each cask i actually taste and check that the profile is correct and only when it reaches the sexton's requirements will we actually release it for disgorging to go to bottling so yeah. each one is more about flavor because what i create today i want you to taste in 10 years time i yeah, want yeah. it to be the same product that's out there so that's one of the things i mean the the casks are, are sourced they're all also sherry casks are they they are indeed so the european oak is sourced in france it's shipped okay. to Spain, uh, air dried for 16 months, and then seasoned with the most amazing Oloroso sherry for two years. Yeah. Uh, we only use from the ground to the first branch of the tree so that we're getting all of those straight flavoursome veins coming through in the cask right. when it's made. And we only use oak scraps to heat the cask, put it into its shape. So it's all very gently treated. So that's where yeah. you're a difference between your bourbon casks and your sherry, sherry casks because you're using the European oak. It's much more porous. So yeah. I don't need to have that for us, a real fire going through it. It can just yeah. be gently toasted to give it the shape that it needs. So it's much yeah. more subtle. So it's spent a minimum of four years in those casks and it certainly hasn't overpowered the whiskey itself either. Is there, um, the distill itself is triple distilled. Obviously we know it's Bushwill sourced whiskey and that's where you operate it out of um what how do you ensure consistency from batch to batch well one of the things when you're doing triple distillation is allows you small batch distillation so i pick the best barley that i can get to give me a flavor profile of the stills that i'm looking for and then we actually when we go through the distillation process i only have about four thousand liters each time and if okay. you think of my casks each cask holds 500 liters so it's yeah. a buck cask i use um, so I'm not getting very many casks out of each of my distillations. So it gives yeah. me that little bit of control. So at each stage, I can ensure the quality and the flavor profile are there from the cuts in the distillation right through to maturation. Okay. And is this distillate very different from the Bushmills distillate that they would use in theirs, or is it similar? Uh, it's a similar profile because it's a triple distillation. It's 100% Irish single malt. 
We yeah. can make a difference in how we cut each time. So the heart of the sexton is suited to the oral, so Sherry. So right. we make sure that profile suits each of the cast profiles that I'm putting away. Yeah. And uh, one of the things about the, the Oloroso Sherry is that uh, it does have a, a sweetening effect, a kind of a Christmassy effect on, on the spirit itself. Are the casks reused, the, the Sherry Butsy reused, or are they single use, or do you use them from batch to batch? Well, when I started out, I actually only want to use first fill sherry casks. So I actually have right. a little bit of wood for you here. So this is actually my first oh. fill Oloroso sherry. So you can see the Oloroso sherry has actually crystallized in some yeah. of the casks and sugared up. But what I found when I started off was that this was almost too sweet. So for a whiskey lover, this was yeah. going to appeal to people maybe that wasn't a whiskey lover. And that's not what I wanted to create. It was that balancing act. That I yeah. wanted to create. So what I did was I removed the sexton from this cask and I put it into what's called the second fill. So basically I had Oloroso sherry before and some sexton. So yeah. new sexton, but you can see here there's oh, yeah. a lot less sugars. Yeah. So you're bringing back in more of the European oak. So that nuttiness was coming back in and balancing out the sweetness. But that still wasn't right. It wasn't the profile I was looking for. So what I did again, a third time, I put new mix spread into the cask on a third occasion and you can see here there's no sugars yeah so this actually yeah. brought really the impact of the european oak back and it's a marriage of those three woods a very high percentage of your first fill and just a little of the other two brought that balance in that just works really really well for me the spice is there the sweetness is there that little nutty flavor and it just comes out so beautiful yeah tell me when you're doing the blending um do you do you do it as a formula or do you do it by taste or a combination uh, it a you have a basic formula but it really does come down to taste as i yeah. say what i create today i want you to be able to taste in 10 years time so it is about a flavor profile uh, which we must be very strict with otherwise you will create something slightly different each time yeah yeah uh, the the launch took place in in dublin last was it last year or the year before? 2018 was Dublin. It's hard to believe it's that long ago now. <laughs> yeah, it was a fantastic launch. And uh, it showed, uh, what I liked about it was it was a very intimate show. It was in Smock Alley. And uh, I know there was another launch, I think, up north. But uh, the one in uh, in Dublin was particularly good. I liked the way they had the dark room. But um, this is a room that you brought everybody in and, and uh, kind of surprised them with the whiskey. And it was a dark tasting, if you like. But uh, you obviously love presenting the whiskey and you're very, very proud of what you've produced. Uh, how, how do you manage to balance all the activities of being the brand ambassador, being the master distiller, being the master blender, you know, being the face of, of the Sexton? It's just such a wonderful privilege to be uh, the, given the opportunity to do all this in my lifetime. Um, so I'm trying to do as much as I possibly can. Obviously, I can't do everything, uh, yeah. but I am trying my best to be out there. For me, being out front of house lets me learn. Uh, yeah. I will only get better at what I do by hearing people tell me what they think and being honest and truthful. I dream of a sexton family and not everybody tastes and eats the same thing. So... For me, my next inspiration can be something different for those people that feel that the sexton isn't for them. I love to hear what it is they don't like or what they prefer so that I can then learn and do something different with the next experience. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you launch this, well, who is your target audience? Who did you have in mind when you were developing the product? As I say, to bring those people that thought whiskey wasn't for them. Uh, so growing up for me, whiskey had... a uh, a persona of people that just didn't think it was for them and I believe whiskey is amazing Irish whiskey in particular we make really really great whiskey here uh, many years ago we were the number one we fell away from that slot with prohibition and the war and different things but we are fighting our way back up to that number one position and you know yourself there's new inspirations coming out every day the sexton yeah. is now part of that and we are showcasing what we can do in Ireland, I believe, really, really well at the moment. And as the category grows and new people want to experience it, they want to experiment. And the Sexton gives you that opportunity. As I say, it can go into cocktails. The cocktail industry have embraced it really well, a single malt that they yeah. can actually put in. And it's been phenomenally received. 
I can be nothing but grateful for those people that have taken it under the wing, fallen in love, tasted it, and go back to buy the next bottle. Yeah. Do you, do you think that the industry is doing enough to actually promote whiskey, Irish whiskey, and take it away from those typical stereotypes that would have been in place? I believe we are. Every day, obviously, we're growing new steps. Um, we have a lot of impact now with a lot of different distilleries coming on board. So there's a lot more clout there to actually showcase what we can do. It's difficult in the past because we were such a small group of people uh, trying to influence an awful lot of people. So nowadays, we've got so more variety, so much more out in the market that people can experiment and try. And I think that gives us that opportunity to showcase better. Yeah. I mean, the market has changed considerably in terms of the demographics of who is drinking whiskey. And obviously, it's a younger crowd, and it, it's certainly more females or, or more ladies are drinking whiskey now than before. Was this targeted at them, or is it a wider appeal that you were looking for? For me, I was looking the wider appeal. I am a whiskey maker, first and foremost. I, obviously, I am a lady, but I have the fortune of a gentleman's name, you could say, with Alex there. Yeah. So it gives me that sort of, uh, I can go out into the marketplace and be telling people about the whiskey and they don't know maybe who I am. Uh, yeah. So they don't believe I'm Alex Thomas. So I get to hear the truth from people of what they believe. And when I tell them that it's something I created, then it's a little bit more of a surprise for them. Uh, yeah. But I do believe that there's just more opportunities out there today for everyone to get yeah. involved in the industry. And it's such a wonderful industry to be a part of. Yeah. We were talking earlier this afternoon and you were saying that uh, quite a lot of people, they, they hear the name and they automatically assume that you're a gentleman. Yeah, it's quite funny when you left the phone and, oh, I wasn't expecting you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Tell uh, it's not well, I mean, I suppose without uh, ignoring the elephant in the room, you know, the the talk about um, women in the industry and some of the derogatory comments that were were, were passed about uh, about women, if you like, and women being demeaned to some extent, um, or to a large extent, actually. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you have a position on that? Well, when I started in the industry, uh, there, was, there was very few opportunities for anybody male or female to join the industry because once you're in that industry you don't want to leave it you fall in love very very quickly as i'm proof to um the sexton is showcasing now by a woman out in the industry uh, so as a master blender i am proof that anybody can do it so there's no place for sexism in whiskey it's not male or female it's a drink to be enjoyed and made by everyone and celebrating yeah. life that's what it's all about for all of us yeah. And you've never experienced any difficulties or have you in terms of developing your career? No, I have been helped by male and female on my journey. And I say I'm very, very grateful for those that have taken me under their wing and sh shared all of the knowledge that they have. It's just inspired me to do something more and be better at what I can do. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's not many master blenders uh female master blenders in the industry it's yourself uh, and uh helen mulholland and i'm sure there's a few others but there's not many in the industry i think that is starting to change and they're certainly starting to get more involved you see more distillers you know so you know in the in the industry which is great to see it's wonderful. It takes time. As I say, 16 years in, I'm still learning. So every yeah. day there'll be something new that I'll experience. So if you have that belief and that drive to do something and create, it's a yeah. wonderful industry to be in. And such a family feel about it from the day in our, I joined the distillery, as I say, they took me under their wing. The yeah. Irish Whiskey Association take us all on board to ensure that what we create represents Ireland well. And at yeah. every opportunity, they're there to help you and you can go and ask anything you want. It's a big family feel and it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, any challenges about being uh, based up north compared to what others might face down here? Obviously, there's the possibility of Brexit or not the possibility that what is going to happen in terms of Brexit. But are there any uh, disadvantages and challenges caused by it's that? It's hard to know how what Brexit's going. Each day it's changing, but we are preparing the best we possibly can. Uh, I think everybody's going to face challenges, but yeah. we'll face them head on and we're all there together to help each other in the best way we can. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, One of the questions I wanted to ask you is the process of actually creating 
the single malt. And as a master blender, what are the mechanics of actually creating the blend, the, the single malt from the various sources? Ah, well, obviously you start off with your barley, so getting the really good barley to begin with. So I work with uh, Port Malt down in Ireland. So mm -hmm. from Wexford Tipperary, the barley is growing. I use a two row low protein barley. So okay. low protein is going to give me more access to the sugar. So if you think of a kinder egg, is the easiest way to describe it. I want to get at the sugars on the inside. So I've actually got some of my barley here. So this okay. is the barley here. So I need to get inside here at the white substance, the sugars, yeah. to be yeah. able to actually uh, produce it. So the more of the sugar I can get, the better. So if you think of your high protein barley as the uh, plastic out round in the Kinder Egg, it's yeah. hard to crack to get inside. So low proteins like the chocolate, I can crack it easy, I can get at the sugar. So that's your first point. You want to get really good uh, sugars coming off and produce really good quality alcohol to begin with. And then you just need time from there. So you do your fermentation and then your distillation. So making your cut at the right point in the distillation can make a huge difference as well. So you want to get rid of all of those alcohols that are going to give you off notes and only have those sweet flavor profiles coming through. And that's what the Sexton Heart is, begins with. It's yeah. clear, so you can see it here. It's really pure and clear. And we're yeah. bringing it off with a triple distillation about 86% alcohol. All right, okay. From there, then we reduce it down to about 64% to go into our cask. Again, your cask, you can make a big difference there. You can make a whiskey that is mediocre to one that's really good quality. And that's yeah. why I only source the best European oak I can. I work with the Antonio Piaz Labata family in Jerez in Spain. Yeah. It's a family tradition passed down from the father to the sons now, very much like my own has been passed down. So yeah. working with one of the sons, I source the oak and the other one we do the seasoning with. So that profile there, make sure the cask I get is the best I possibly can. Then yeah. you need again some more time. You put your uh, your spirit away and you watch it. So one of the things I would have been learning when I started out was that single malts, you don't normally do a lot of work with them in the early stages because you're not going to bring them out until 10, 12, 16 years. Yeah. But what I did was start looking from day one. And with this distillate, these casks, it was amazing in and around the younger ages how they were working so well. And that's why the Sexton was able to come out at the younger age, making it a much more affordable single malt and versatile for people to actually drink their way. Yeah. I mean, you're bottling at 40%. Uh, is that uh, non-chill filtered, non-coloured or natural colour or is it chill filtered? It's, it's chill filtered. Um, obviously, it helps get rid of any of the impurities that's in the whiskey and give you that clearness. Uh, and for me, yes, I've got a dark bottle, but I want to make sure what you get in your glass is consistent and it works really well and is pure. Uh, so the chill filtering just helps with that. Yeah. And non-coloured? It colors comes from your cask. So the all are also right. share is a high percentage of the first fill. So those that real rich color. So we have here some of our all rosa. So you yeah. can see here you're getting such a high percentage coming through that the color is really working well. Is it difficult to source casks? I mean the demand is obviously growing uh with all the industry expanding so much. Is it difficult to actually source casks? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're perfectly right. The industry is growing greatly. Um, I've been very fortunate to have the knowledge of working with the Antonio pa family before. So I have no issues with them at all at the moment because I actually bring the, the wood over from France. We construct right. the cask and have control from the very beginning. So our casks are made and controlled. So a quality perspective is there from the very beginning. So we're not actually buying casks in from anybody right. else where we have to have more control. Obviously, sherry, you have to be very careful to make sure you get a really good quality. Otherwise, yeah. you can actually sulfur from the sherry cask and actually ruin some of your spirit. So, Yeah. I mean, it's very clear that you really do take charge of, of the whole process from the very beginning right through to the very end. And one of the ends, of course, is marketing and selling the product. So I, I see you're very active on social media as well, and you're always putting up there. Uh, cocktail recipes any particular favorites of yours that you think this is particularly well suited to oh, 
for me, even from somebody that can't make cocktails overly well, but loves drinking them, something as simple as the old fashioned just works really, really well. Or a, a quirk on the, the martinis. So you can go like espresso martini, it only goes sex and martini. So we've called it the sextini. It works okay. really well. But one of the wonderful things about having the opportunity to travel with the sexton and going to America, again, the cocktail industry have taken it on board. And what they have done with it is phenomenal. They have now taken spirits like absinthe and put it in with the sexton and made a drink that I now can actually drink absinthe in. They have wow. added Pedro Jimenez with it and it works really, really well. So it's such a versatile whiskey, but it never, ever loses its flavor profile. No matter what cocktail we put it in, you can taste that base, base flavor of the sexton, which for me is the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, any plans to further develop the range and perhaps bring out uh, variations of the Sexton or or a completely new brand? Well, obviously the Sexton is for me is still a new brand that's out there. We've only been out since two thousand, sorry, two thousand and seventeen. So I am concentrating and getting that out to as many people as possible in the marketing side. But as a master blender, I would be telling you, Fib, if I wasn't always looking for something different and something more. And as I said, I'm learning from people and what yeah. they like and what they don't like. So there's always something going on in the background. And my dream would be to have a sexton family. So watch this space. <laughs> wow. Uh, would you would you go as far as saying you'd like to have a, your own distillery? Oh, that would be amazing. To see a building with the name Sexton over the top of it would just be phenomenal. Um, yeah. But I, I'm content in what I've got. Um, you have to be happy for your lessons that you're given. Um, I have been given more than my fair share at the moment. So that would really be a dream come true. Yeah. Of course, Coleraine does have a, a history. The Coleraine whiskey, uh, produce, we're producing grain for Bushmills in the past. Uh, long, oh, it's quite a long time since they closed it. But uh, it'd be great to see another one reopen there in the future. It would be wonderful. The North Coast is such a beautiful place. Um, to be home of the Sexton Distillery would be absolutely amazing. So, yeah. yeah. Dreams can a, come true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, you would have had a, a, a great role within Bushmills and you would have been learning a lot. Have you always wanted to have your own brand or was this something that developed over time? It developed over time. The more you get to learn in the industry and the passion that comes out of the people within the industry, you can't help but get infected by it. Um, yeah. Maturation for me is where the magic happens. It's just something so magical about taking something so raw and clear and turning it into something people want to enjoy and celebrate life with friends and family. Um, yeah. I, it's just a privilege to be part of that and to have people enjoying and telling stories with each other over something that I've created is just really an, a real privilege to think that many, many years after I'm gone, that people are still enjoying the Sexton and Alex Thomas is still part and parcel of that would just be amazing. That's my legacy. That's my story to be told. So, uh, yeah, three years. What a difference. Yeah, it's three years only. And the, the brand has really come on very, very strongly. And I, you know, I, I think a lot of it is the branding, but certainly the price point does make it very approachable. And being a relatively young whiskey, I don't think it it detracts from it at all. The fact that it's fully matured in a in an Oloroso sherry cask does make a difference. It does. It make, for me, the Oloroso was amazing. The European oak is such a good cask to work with. It just gives you so many different flavor profiles coming in through there that just allows you to be versatile when you actually drink your whiskey. So say add a little life, it works really, really well. Add a little ginger ale and right. you have totally different spirits coming through there. Ginger beer will make it a little bit spicier. So the profiles are there for you to experiment with and find what you actually like. And that's yeah. one of the wonderful things about being out in the market. When people say to me they don't like it, I usually ask, well, what do you normally drink? And you find that they actually drink lower alcohol, so maybe beers at 8% or wines in around 12 And that's what puts them off on alcohol at 40%. So yeah. you add the mixers in, you give them it with a little ginger ale, and all of a sudden I've made a whiskey uh, lover out of them. So it's just yeah. having that experience and passing on that knowledge gives yeah. you a wonderful feeling. Our friend from up north, uh, Alan, uh, Whiskey Straight, he's asking, are there any plans for a cask strength version? 
Well, I would love to say that will be hopefully something I can create in the future. I do love to take cast strength with me to the whiskey festivals. And I have heard loads of great reports about it from Dublin, from America, and most recently in Belfast last year. And yeah. everybody loved it. So that would be something I would really love to do myself. I love the cast strength. Um, and we took it, I say, to Belfast, and it was our first year there. And the Sexton outsold every single whiskey there. So what an amazing feeling for me uh, coming to my home uh, whiskey festival and to come home with a title that we were the number one selling whiskey there was great. So yeah, disappointed great. we didn't get this year, but next year we will make an, a, a statement there again. So Yeah, hopefully there'll be a show in uh, Whiskey Social in Belfast and Whiskey yeah. Live next year will we'll come on. Um, what are your big markets, actually? Is it primarily America or... Have you other markets that you've identified that you'd like to enter? Well, obviously, uh, the U.S. is our first market. We launched there back in 2017, so we have been really, really well received there. Um, but since then, we have we came to Ireland, we've came to the U.K., we've gone to Poland. We recently got into a lot of the travel retail. Um, so it, it's every day we're getting a new market, we're getting it out there. We yeah. have I obviously got a certain amount of stock. I want to make sure that, again, the flavor profile is there so I'm not mass producing something. It's something yeah. flavor profile. So only when that cask is right will I release it. So that limits where I can go and the speed I can grow. But we are yeah. growing phenomenally well in the short space of time that we have been on the market. And, yeah, it's been amazing. And as people fall in love with it more and more, I will keep putting more and more of it away in the warehouse. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what what is it about the whole whiskey business that you love most? Oh, it has to be maturation. I love it. There's nothing better than walking through a warehouse in the morning, nobody else about, and all you have is that beautiful aroma of the cast coming around. You get the chill of the warehouse and yeah. knowing that those casts are breathing in and out. They're almost like living things, growing and almost like my children. They're growing up. And they're learning what they need to do to get out into the world. And I get the joy of releasing them out to take the journey and learn all those different things for different people. So yeah, it's, it's a privilege to be part of and just a wonderful, wonderful experience. Yeah. I mean, if there's one thing that you, you'd say that you've learned that's been the most valuable lesson, uh, and maybe it's from a mistake as well. I mean, what do you think that's been? It's don't be scared to take risks. Um, yeah. If I hadn't have been prepared to feel to start with, the sexton would never be here. As I say, I wanted nothing but first fill. I had this idea in my head that that would be the best thing, and yeah. it wasn't. But instead of sitting back and saying, right, I'm finished, I went back at it again. So keep going. You can reach your dreams. You just have to put the work in. And if you do that, you will be rewarded. And I'm living proof. Here I am yeah. sitting talking to you three years ago. I would never I have dreamed this possible. So it's an absolute privilege to be out there doing what you absolutely love. You no longer call it a job, but you call it a passion. And um, I would almost sleep in the distillery if I was allowed. It's such a wonderful place to be. Yeah. I mean, it really comes across. And I think uh, what I do like and what I admire is that you've never made a big play on the fact that you're a woman in the industry. But I think, you know, women as strong as yourself and, and taking the risks that you have, very much an inspiration to the younger females out there to go out and take chances. And I think that's important. Uh, so hats off to you for doing that. I think it's a, a fantastic uh, achievement, a fantastic drama, a fantastic representative for, for, for whiskey and Irish whiskey and particularly the North, you know. So, I mean, the North is undergoing particular rebirth i think in irish whiskey i mean you see the investment there that went into ecklenville you see mcconnell's whiskey you see hinch distillery you see a lot of growth actually happening now up north uh, and hopefully that'll that'll continue and uh, i mean what's what have been what have been the biggest uh, rewards for you in terms of producing this so giving back a little bit for those people that had a belief in me from day one um, and to now be on the other side of that and to be able to give back a little bit of what I learned to someone coming before me. Um, for me, that, that has to be part and parcel of being a master blender and a master distiller and being part of this industry. So many people give to you uh, to help you get to where you are. So but giving back and 
being grateful for all of those people that took the time to spend with me on the good days and the bad uh, and being there to support me from my family to the people at the distilleries to the sexton team they are a wonderful team and they all love what they do and if it wasn't for them i wouldn't be sitting here today so yeah yeah I, I I see that um, some people are saying they love this uh, the sexing in a cocktail. It wasn't designed specifically for cocktails. It was designed to be a wider appeal than that. Yeah, it was indeed. Uh, as I say, for me, it was all about the whiskey and the cocktail side of it came out more when it was launched, um, and that was thanks to the bartender side of the industry. They are right. growing greatly themselves. Um, they have come on leaps and bounds. Like many years ago, there were maybe only one or two different types of spirits in each of the bars. Now they have so many different ones and what they can create is inspirational. Um, what I do as an industry is totally different from what they do. They take many, many different spirits and put them together and give us a cocktail experience that just is unbelievable. So uh, hats off to them and, and the industry and what they're doing. They are helping all of us get better at what we do. Yeah. Is there is there anything more you think that maybe the governments or the Irish Whiskey Association or other bodies could do to actually help the industry more? Well, I have to say being part of the Irish Whiskey Association has been a, a wonderful experience. They have ensured that what I do represents Ireland well, and that's always our focus is to make sure whatever we create represents this wonderful island well um, we are a small island but what we can do is phenomenal here we can show that we have a mighty force in the industry and yeah. people are falling back in love with ireland the category has grown phenomenally well over the last few years so having that support from them and the government as you said yourself is supporting through uh, different schemes and helping those distilleries come on board can only grow us strength from strength so yeah it's the more help I mean, we can get the better yeah what do you what do you make of the of the growth actually uh, do you think uh, and what are the risks in growing as fast as we have obviously there's always risks that, that maybe it, there'll be a peak we'll get to and the, uh, new distilleries will struggle but i honestly believe that the whiskey we produce will speak for itself people will always love what we do because we are in my personal opinion the best at making whiskey so yeah. we will always create the best we possibly can so that people will always enjoy what we create there will be no one making whiskey that will cause any harm to the category so all we can do is grow so yeah. um yeah there's a nice compliment there from jp brown tried the sexton last week and they loved it at the Whiskey Live in the UK. So Oh, wonderful. Thank you very so, much. Must be nice to hear. And then Sarah from O'Connell's, uh, McConnell's uh, Irish Whiskey, she's saying uh, the, the cocktail sector opens up a whole new category as well. So um, I know there were some amazing cocktails at the, at the launch when you had it in Smock Alley in Dublin. I can't remember the names of them. I think I probably had too many of them, but they were. Yeah, they oh, we were have really Robert to Death. We have loads of different names that we have come up with. Uh, you will find them on the Sexton website, and you can feel free to have a go, make them at home, and have a try. Uh, say so the wonderful thing is to see people creating and putting on Facebook or Instagram what they think works really well with the Sexton. Um, and then I get to try it at home and see if I can make it. But. Uh, it's wonderful like the, the locally the merchants have taken it on board and put it as one of their key cocktails little different bars around the town and in belfast and dublin have taken it on board and created something totally new uh yeah. for how it works and yeah experiment that's what it's about i i experiment with the whiskey so feel free to experiment and enjoy it yeah i mean you're you are very active on social media is it important that you do have that communication with the with the consumer Obviously, as a new brand, I want to try and get as many people to try it as possible. Social media is a wonderful opportunity to reach people that I possibly wouldn't. Um, obviously, COVID has actually made me realize how important that is. People are at home and social media is a way of reaching out to them. So uh, for me, if I can get the opportunity to actually one on one have a conversation with people anywhere over the world, it gives me a really good feeling to know that we have reached them in whatever way that is. And again, yeah. learning about different things that they like about it, what they don't like. Um, and if I can help in any way and teach them anything they want to know about the spirit, that's only good for me. Yeah, I mean, more nice comments there from Mark Murphy. 
saying the essentially the taste matches the bottling. So I mean, the, the initial impression is 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 really fantastic, and I mean, you must have put a lot of thought into the branding, the design, the whole uh, sexton message behind it, and all the rest. How important is branding to a product? For me, it can make or break. You need to give people a reason why they buy that bottle. The bottle is obviously eye-catching. It gives them a reason to lift it, but what's inside is why they come back. So yeah. everything has to be really, really good about it. Um, the Sexton's my life story in the bottle, as I say. It's everything about those people that put me where I am. So it's the first inspiration. So it meant an awful lot to me to have it created and going out into the world. It was scary. Um, yeah. But I had to know I could stand behind everything that was there. So it's only the best quality products that we can buy, bottle, barley, wood, all are also sherry, so that what we give you is the best I possibly can make and give you at a price we can afford. Yeah. I mean, I really commend you, especially on the value proposition. It's fantastic at the at the price point. I, I don't know. It stands on its own merits regardless of price. So well done on that. Uh, a lot of people are, are commenting that uh, they would like to try variations of it and try it at different strengths and maybe different finishes. Y you can't give us any indication as to where you might be going with it. I, again, I'm always experimenting. I want, uh, flavor profiles for me is what I can do different. And I'm learning all the time from everyone telling me about Oh, they love the sherry, but they would like to try something different. So they may be maturing away at the moment, but whether they'll see daylight or not, it's obviously something I have to be very careful with myself, ensuring that I create something that will be enjoyed. I got it wrong in the beginning with the sex, and for me, it wasn't going to be a whiskey. So it's taking that time and that patience to know what the next family member may be or may yeah. not be uh, is something that will be well received. So uh, if I take the time now and make sure what I do is great, You'll enjoy it. So yeah, what's this? Oh, we're looking forward. We're looking forward to to new additions. I, I suppose one thing I want, I, and having spoken to other master blenders and other blenders, um, do you have a way that you think about flavor? I know I've spoken to some others, and they they think of flavor in terms of numbers, and some of them think of it in terms of color. Um, do you, what's your what's your thought? How do you describe in your own head? Oh, now you're asking that. Ah, that's a good question. For me, it's just about knowing that I actually enjoy it personally. It, it's something about, you know, there's certain things that I like and I don't like about a flavor profile. Uh, it's hard to put into words. Uh, I love the spice. I love the sweetness of things. And I suppose, yeah, there is a color chart you could say in your head that you're using and you simulate that with the different uh, flavor profiles that you're getting in there. So the raisins and that little bit of spice and you're kind of going almost around that flavor wheel as yeah, you're yeah. tasting the things. Uh, so, yeah, that's probably in your head. You've got that flavor wheel in there all the time. But as you pass it around each part of your mouth, you're going to pick up something different. So yeah. it depends on the day, how you feel in the morning. You'll want something different. In the end of the day that flavor profile will change for you so it very much varies on what you're going out and how you almost feel that day yeah i mean what... can you have a do you have bad tasting days bad blending days i mean can that happen it's, it's more for uh whether your head's in the space so right. when you're going out to look at a cast for me i want to be in a, almost a positive attitude i don't want yeah. to be going out uh if i've had a real stressful day I want yeah. to go out there knowing that I what I'm looking for is almost peaceful and that relaxed feeling of going into a warehouse. But even if you are a little stressed, when you walk into that environment, it brings you back to that natural feeling of just wanting to chill out and go through the warehouse and try different casks. So there's nothing better for a stressful day than a dander around a warehouse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The aromas just going through the warehouse are fantastic. You know, even the echo yeah. that you get in the rooms uh, yeah, i love it, that sensation it definitely is. and to go down into disgorging and experience that when the casts are actually being released and you get all of those beautiful aromas come around you yeah it's an experience that is worth going to see an experience yeah when all this covid thing is over what's the thing you're most looking forward to getting traveling again getting out there to experience the sexton and telling people about it and going to different places different bars seeing exactly how they receive the sexton so 
yeah, the that side of the business for me is a very new thing. Uh, so to see the, the the difficulties and the struggles and the things that they have to deal with can only help me get better. Um, that was the reason we launched the Leader Bottle, learning right. from the bar staff in America and what they wanted. Um, say I'm not a glass designer. I knew very little about the bottling side of the industry until I got involved in the sexton side of the business. So learning from what the bar staff need can only yeah. help me get better in what I do. Yeah, I mean, that was an unusual one, definitely, was the uh, the litre size bottle. It Unlike other bottles, it doesn't look like a litre. I mean, it doesn't look overly bigger than your no, standard right. 700, 750 mil bottle. It's just, it's a strange one to kind of comprehend. But, yeah, it just struck me. I, I saw them side by side, and, yes, it is bigger, but it doesn't seem massively bigger but i'm gently building the giant's causeway stones <laughs> all right yeah yeah it'd be amazing to get a whole collection of these bottles and actually go and and uh place them on the site and have a look and see play around Indeed. with it a little bit yeah i mean it is very playful you can it is versatile as well in in how it's displayed uh, and of course that's a huge part in terms of uh branding and putting it out in, in the bars itself yeah. It is. It's a fun brand to be part of. As you say, you were at the launch and what we can do with the brand and do things differently. We did tastings in the dark. For me, if you take away one of your senses, your others are automatically heightened. Um, by us taking away the sight on that event, people didn't uh... get to see that rich, dark color coming through and automatically go, oh, this is going to taste in a certain way. There's sherry in there. It'll be nice. They had to totally rely on their taste palette and the nose and the smell of what they were getting. And it was unbelievable how many people actually then did experience exactly what I was telling, that rich, dark chocolate, the spice coming in, the all spice, the raisin. They really got it because yeah. their mind was focused on what they were doing rather than what they saw. Uh, so, it, it, yeah, it's a fun thing to be part of and teach people a different way of looking at things. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely... I. I'd never experienced that actually tasting the the spirit in the dark at, uh, at a tasting anyway, you know, but, uh, well, look, I, I mean, I, I, I'm delighted that you joined us. I, I really, I'm in awe of what you've achieved in a, in a very short period of time. And like I say, you're an inspiration for people that want to go out and set up their own brand. And I, I hope that, you know, there are new releases. We'd love to see new releases as well. And, uh, hopefully with COVID you'll get back to do, to travel what do you do when you're not when you're when you're not out in the road what do you do to relax to when do you have any time um well i have got a little uh I suppose relaxing time for me we uh, my husband and i have three dogs at home so taking me on for a walk or a run to the park is yeah. always relaxing most of the time until maybe one of them runs after a ball and doesn't come back but yeah. <laughs> most of the time it's very relaxing and i say you'll always be greeted friendly with a dog at home so whether you're going five minutes or five hours so yeah having that little bit of downtime with the family is always really nice yeah yeah but i mean you are going to be going into the distillery over the next period You're, the covid isn't isn't a factor for you directly no um the size of the distillery we we're very easily able to social distance and ensure that we can comply with all the regulations and say our first and foremost is getting everyone home safe every day to their family we make whiskey after that so we're very yeah. focused on that and we will continue to do that very good Tell me, if, if somebody wants to get more information, uh, presumably your website uh, is the number one place to go, is it? The number one place, or they'll get me on Instagram or Facebook. I'm more than happy to deal with anybody who wants to talk to me one-on-one -on -one as well. But say, drop us a line. We're more than happy to share and tell you a little bit more about the sexton and anything else you want to know. So, Yeah. One, one last question. I suppose when people are drinking your whiskey in 20 or year, 30 years time maybe more i hope more well, what is it you'd like them to to think of in terms of their thinking of, of yourself and of the sexton well for me it's about their family and their friends it's their life story and to make memories with them before they meet the man that lays their body to rest so that they have a story worth telling that for me is the most important thing we have friends and we have family here that we need to look after and care for and they are there for us every single day and help us be the people that we are. So the sexton represents that. It's live your life story and live it well. And if you can do that over a wonderful whiskey like the sexton, sure, what better way is there? Absolutely. Well, look, I'll drink to that, definitely. So, Slauncha, thank you very much for being a guest on the show. It's been lovely to speak to you. And uh, 
wish you continued success. Thank you very much. It's been a privilege to be on with you tonight. And thank you very much for everybody that's supporting this excellent. Excellent. Look, thank you very much indeed. Take care. Thank See you. you Alex. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, it was great. Uh, thanks again to Alex for joining us. Uh, real inspiration. And uh, I think she's made that whiskey really approachable and given it a really fresh breath of air. Uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you have, you might consider subscribing, uh, hitting the subscribe button. And uh, next week we have uh, two special guests again. Uh, and this time we're going back to Dublin and we have Alex Chasco and Jack Teeling from Teeling Whiskey and Teeling Distillery. So that should be exciting. Uh, they've got obviously a few releases there recently and lots of news. So um, we look forward to chatting to them and hopefully we'll see you next week. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, stay safe, stay well and uh, take care. Thank you.